welcome back to From the Bench. Everybody is always there today, back with a new segment on the channel. This one is going to be about talking about cards, whether it's investments, whether it's guys that I think you should maybe are too low, maybe are too high, things that don't make sense to me. It's kind of just going to be like a chit chat about cards on the channel. Uh, I'm also probably looking at maybe some lives eventually to talk to people. Maybe I get other guys in the hobby on do almost like a podcast, maybe a live show. We'll, we'll figure it out as time goes on. Um, but it's just something I want to do. I'm still going to product on the channel. It's going to happen. Okay. I got two boxes of SBA coming in. I'm still going to rip retail stuff. I'm still going to grab the odd hobby box and stuff. Um, obviously I just ripped two boxes, two full cases of series one from this year and series one from last year on the channel. So there's lots of ripping going on. Um, but I just wanted to get, bring something else on the channel just cause I don't think that you guys want to watch me rip the same hobby boxes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and there's some products that I just don't think are worth it. I've talked about before, you know, just came out a couple weeks ago. It's been 600 bucks for premiere to me. It doesn't make sense. When you look at what stuff for, for premiere stuff goes for. Uh, so I'm just like looking at other options. So this one in particular uh, there's a couple different reasons why you, why you collect, right? I've talked about this before. I have this in my guide to grading when it comes to like who you're going to grade with, everything else. But there's reasons why you collect. Some of stuff is going to be like your PC stuff. Hence, my backdrop. Uh, so I got RJ Barrett. He's Canadian, plays basketball, high end pick. A Canadian playing basketball. Or just I'm going to invest in that guy. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, Mary Timer, plays for my favorite pro team, the Avalanche. Got to invest in that guy questionable you know junior team i'm not gonna hold it against them um but once again easy decision for me same as justin herbert back there and these are gonna be a little bit more rg barrett actually is not that expensive still somehow don't really understand it had a pretty good year this year but nathan mckinnon a psa 10 it's not cheap and when i talk about hockey it's i'll probably talk more canadian dollars the football stuff later on, we'll talk about kind of American dollars, but um, Nathan McKinnon, I think one of those went for like $1,400 Canadian the other day. Um, Justin Herbert, they go from 900, 1000 1200 like they, they're they all over the place, but they're a more expensive card, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Sometimes your PC stuff, and once again, all those cards back there are stuff I'll never sell because they're guys that I really like that play for my teams. Right, so I'll probably never sell those guys. Um, another guy that isn't as expensive, you guys hear me say it all the time, former Moncton Wildcat, and then insert name there. Uh, this one being Ivan Barbashev. So I have... All these Ivan Barbashevs. We have Super Sensations, we got the Cop, we got some Young Guns, a, a Premier. Um, we got Exclusive, we got a... You know, peachy platinum auto like this could go from being a five dollar card to a hundred dollar card. And I wouldn't sell it because the PC thing. Same as like, if anybody you guys watched my draft prospect stuff from last year, I loved Rashawn Slater. The Chargers end up getting him. I'm never gonna sell these. Doesn't matter what it is, just because I like that player, right? So, someone's gonna be that. The other reason why people collect sometimes is to make a profit. It's good. Not a bad thing. We all spend a lot of money in this hobby, whether it's PC guys, whether it's ripping, whether it's whatever it is, there's no problem with trying to make some money off some guys. Some of that's quick flips, buying a $5 card at a show, flipping it for $20 or $10 or $8. Um, my last, the card show vlog I put up, um, which I'll be doing another card show at the end of this month on the 23rd. Keep an eye out for another video. I'm setting up a booth, actually, getting a table. Um, but I bought, like, a Trey Lance and a Justin Fields in that video. Paid 45 bucks for the two of them. Went, sold the Trey Lance for $45 on eBay. Cashed out probably 38 bucks after fees, whatever it is. Um, so for I'm into the Justin Fields for $7. It's pretty good, right? I think that's a pretty good $7 into a first-round rookie quarterback. Pretty good. I just enjoy that stuff, right? Like I enjoy picking up some of this and and working a little bit of a deal and, and and doing that and flipping cards. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? Grabbing a card, flipping it a week later, you know, you see all these guys uh, on, on YouTube doing all these card show videos, whether it's a 
Ryan from Card Collector 2, whether it's um, Roth cards, whether it's Kenneth Fornos, uh, whether it's Mojo, whether it's um, Talking to Keen, uh, whether it's, um, who's the other guy I'm thinking of? I've screwed up his name twice now. Sam <laughs> Rothstein. Uh, all these guys are guys that I follow, and I really enjoy it, right? You pick up a card, you got to lean into it for hundred bucks you sell it for 150 like i just i enjoy that whether it's ten dollars or a hundred dollars whatever it is i enjoy that stuff right but sometimes you get into the hey look i'm going to invest in this guy because i think that you know in football season maybe right now you're looking at buying guys maybe you think i'm going to buy him now because i think his price is going to be this at the start of the season or i think by the end of the season maybe his cards go even crazier right um or maybe you're looking like super long out. I'm going to buy this guy because I think he's cheap. And I think in five years, he could be more, right? Maybe, like I said, whatever it is, whatever you're thinking of, there has to be a reason for it, right? And I love that part of it too. I love the prospecting. It's a huge thing in the hobby now, right? You're, you see guys buying all these crazy guys. I always shake my head and we'll get into it one, probably one day. Lamelo Ball, I always just say like for the price of Lamelo Ball, like does Lamelo Ball ever become... A Hall of Famer. Does Lamella Ball ever be? Just one of those things for the price. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but the other thing I want to say before we get into this, and I want this is probably the most important thing on this whole video. Listen closely. If you cannot buy that card, whether it's $5, $10, $100, $500, $1,000, whatever it is, and you can't afford for that card to all of a sudden be worth zero, do not buy it. Do not buy a card on with, with a credit card, uh, unless you're paying that off immediately just because you're getting the points or whatever it is. No matter what it is, if you do not have that as just money in your bank account or cash in your hand that you can spend that money, and it's okay that if it just goes out the window tomorrow, do not buy that card, okay? You don't want to see people, you don't want to see nobody go broke because, oh, I overspent or I over leveraged myself and now I'm, I don't, I, I can't afford anything and I'm behind on this, I'm behind on bill. Don't. If you have, save up your money a little bit, put a little bit of slush fund and maybe you can make it into a, you know, a $5 card, into a $10 card and then, you know, do that stuff. But do not actually spend money that you can't afford to lose. That's the biggest thing. Because anything can happen, right? Andrew Luck was the biggest prospect, right? Top 10 quarterback, everything going right, especially all of a sudden Chris Ballard comes in, he starts rebuilding the team, everything's getting exciting. It's like, this is huge. Guys have massive money into it. And this is before the, you know, the hobby took off, you know, the last couple of years. And all of a sudden the guy retires. What? Andrew Luck? Been to the playoffs, carried the Colts, even though the team, rest of the team stunk. Uh, you know, carrying the playoff, like everything. And the guy just retires. Pfft, Andrew Luck cards, if that was now, he would have been the same price as a Herbert. And all of a sudden, he's going to be worth, you know, that, say it's a thousand bucks. What's it worth then? A hundred bucks? Right? It's like, you just got to think about this stuff, right? It's just, same with prospecting. I love Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen, the chosen Rosen, uh, you know, his stuff, you look at what it, it's nothing now, right? His national treasure, I watched it go for like 60 bucks the other day, American, like out of, 90, out of 99, like it's just one of those things. Like if you can't afford for that card to go to zero, do not spend the money. But this episode, what I'm going to do more of is talk to you about kind of what some guys that I think. And why that I think, where my thought process goes for my daily, my day job, uh, other than this, this is not my day job, obviously, is I deal with a lot of comparables. And that's what I love to do. I love numbers. I think they're awesome. So when I'm doing this, it's all about like, if I buy this card for this, what am I comparing him to, right? Where am I, what's his bottom line? What's his base and what's his ceiling, right? So that's kind of where I go off of all this stuff. Um, once again, if it's a PC guy, great. This doesn't really matter for a quick flip, right? That week to two weeks to whatever, it doesn't really matter. But like I said, football's coming up. Um, if you're talking, you know, 
before the season, like I said, you can make a lot of money on, on that stuff. So um, one guy, and we'll start with the football first, and then we'll go to the hockey second. A uh, guy that I decided I'm going to start buying a little bit of. Zach Wilson. Once again, if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, you would have seen some of the stuff I picked up of Zach Wilson. Okay. The reason why is because I think he's cheap. Now, do I think Zach Wilson is the greatest quarterback of all time? No. But do I see there being a potential that you can make profit off of Zach Wilson? 100%. Um, there's lots of reason for it. One reason is... And you want to look at, when you're looking at football cards, you want to look at flagship. And we'll get into this maybe on like another episode. But like, don't buy the garbage, certain sets, the elite, the absolute, unless you're looking for kabooms. I've done that, obviously. Um, just there's certain brands. It's all going to be Panini, but the kind of the, you just don't want to look. So Mosaic, I think, is a fair one. A lot of people like the brand. A lot of people like the, the series. Um, so... Mosaic, Optic, Prism. For me, for the retail series product, that's what I would kind of go off of. Obviously, there's other stuff. There's some bigger ones. But for me, those are kind of the three biggest ones. So, for example, really where I compare Zach Wilson to, do I compare Zach Wilson prices to Justin Herbert? No. Why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense, right? But I think a good comparable for him is Tua. Right, Tua has zero hype around him. Tua, his just doesn't get the love in the hobby. I find like anywhere's. So it's like uh, nobody's really there. He's obviously they've talked about bringing in Deshaun Watson, bringing in Tom Brady. Now that they've talked about, it. there's all these rumors, and he's kind of in the back. And a Zach Wilson is cheaper than Tua. So like a mosaic silver, so this is the variation, but like a base mosaic silver of Zach Wilson goes for $20 to $30 American, okay? A Tua rookie base silver of mosaic goes for 30 to 40 So minimum, these are $10 cheaper than what a Tua would go for right now. If I'm just looking up raw prices, not PSA tens, not anything like that's another thing. Do not do not buy if if you can't go on a forum or go somewhere and just don't buy these. If you're gonna buy the cards that are no name grading companies, buy them for raw prices essentially. Just putting that out there. Anyways, so twenty thirty dollars compared to a two that's thirty forty with no hype, I can get behind that, right? Like that kind of shows you what your bottom, your floor is, right? So it's like, okay, I can I can get behind that. Worst case, I break even, right? How like can this really go much lower than that? Probably not, right? And this is in the off season. This is before we even get to the start of the season hype. It's all this stuff, right? Um, and compare it to what it could be. You know, a Joe Burrow is eighty to a hundred dollars for mosaic silver. A Justin Herbert's a hundred dollars to I seen one as high as one hundred and fifty for raw, right? So you're talking even if he becomes a not quite a borough. Maybe he comes with a $60 card. Well, all of a sudden, maybe you're making $30 to $40 on each card. Once again, pretty good. That would be more of a middle season. So maybe he jumps up to like $40 or $50 before the season. That's even good, right? So it's it's a lot of stuff, but it's, it's stuff to think about, right? Like that's where you kind of want to see what the potential is. And I always say like if you get a couple of them, it's gonna, if you have the money, do not go in over spend on stuff don't do not overreach yourself on what you're gonna do but if you're gonna do this maybe you can get four of them and maybe in the hype of it you sell off two of them and you get what your initial investment for the four of them was or maybe you sell three of them to get back your initial investment great you broke even now that fourth card's free and now you can just sit on it so if he does pop off become really good okay well now three quarters away through the season, he's having a really good season. Everyone's on the hype train. Maybe he goes for the same price of what like a Burrow goes for like 80 bucks. Okay. Well, once again, that's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> All of a sudden you just made $50 on this card. That's pretty good, right? So you just get things to think about. Um, contenders, auto, 
it's a flagship, right? It goes back to the Brady, right? That's the one of the king of the Bradys, right? The big contenders auto for him. Um, no matter who it is, you know, the Philip Rivers, Eli Manning, Big Ben, uh, Patrick Mahomes, all these. It's a huge card, the, the base contenders auto. Um, and it obviously just came out not that long ago for this last year's draft class. But you're talking 350 to 380 right now. There was somewhere around 400 a couple weeks ago for Zach Wilson. But now they're 350 to 380. Not a cheap card, 100%. Once again, this is American. So not a cheap card at all to invest in. But a Tua, the last handful of sales I could see, you're talking raw 410 to 440. So he's already minimum $30 cheaper on that than what a Tua is. So it's like, same thing. You're just looking at like the base of where he's going to go down. Like after this year, is he really going to be that much less desirable than what a Tua is? I don't know. I don't really think so, right? Like he would have to be some bad. And this goes back to believing in who you're going to spend your money on. So like, I think Zach Wilson is a good quarterback. But I also believe in the GM there. I don't believe in Joe Douglas. I just think he's going to be a good GM. I think he's going to build a good team around him. Right? It's why I didn't go in on a Trevor Lawrence. We'll get into that maybe one day. But it's like I just don't like the GM there. I don't. I think Trevor Lawrence is the better quarterback. But I don't know if the Jaguars are going to put the right pieces around Trevor Lawrence to give him as much of a chance to be as good as a Zach Wilson. Right? This goes back to Mac Jones. Probably the fifth best quarterback, fifth best potential for quarterbacks last year. Played on the best team. You know, he played on a, on a team with a really good defense, with a really good offensive line, really good coaching. Yeah, he's going to look the best out of all of them, right? So, um, once again, that's not the rest of it. But if you look at that, and once again, you're looking at the potential, right? That's, and not to say that he ever becomes a Herbert, a Burrow, a Josh Allen, a Lamar Jackson. You go through all these guys. But a Joe Burrow contender's auto, 2500 to 3000 raw. A Justin Herbert, $3,000. Josh Allen, $3,300. That's a $3,000 difference. A two to $3,000 difference between what the Zach Wilson goes for compared to what those go for. So once again, even if he just has a pretty good, shows some more upside this year. Maybe he's kind of in the middle. Maybe he's not quite the holy as what the other ones are. Maybe he's a $1,500, right? It's just one of those things. Josh Allen wasn't Josh Allen a couple of years ago, right? Like Josh Allen after his first two years, phew, and then he took off, right? So it's, it's always one of those things you never know. Um, but like I said, it gives you a good base to see where he is. Once again, could become Josh Rosen, right? Could become the guy that's not good. Could become a Mitchell Trubisky who's obviously getting a second chance. Could become um, just insert Daniel Jones. Could become all these guys, right? Just guys that aren't very good um, that have kind of went the other way. It happens all the time. It's the joys of football, right? Jared Goff, stuff's not the greatest, right? Um, Carson Wentz, stuff's not the greatest. There's... Mariota, Jameis, it goes on. Like I said, there's a lot of quarterbacks that don't pan out. So you got to be safe with this. But you just, like I said, find the floor, especially if in the next like year, kind of gives you a good idea of where a floor of like a guy like Tua is and what it could be for like a Zach Wilson. Uh, second sport we're going to talk about, and I'll probably dive more into that. But like I said, this is just where my mind goes for this stuff. And I just want you guys to kind of see it from my potential, from my perspective uh, and on their potential and stuff. Second one, once again, if you guys have been on my Instagram or Twitter, you would have seen these, but another latest pickups, Jack Eichel. We're going to talk about him for a minute, um, but it's another guy. Jack Eichel, 25 years old. Obviously had all the injury, had the neck thing. Buffalo wouldn't let him get the surgery he wanted, uh, but in season se year seven, 401 games played. 375 points. Pretty close to like a point per game. Once again, pretty good. Second overall pick next to McDavid. He's an American playing in Vegas now. Vegas has a huge fan base. Um, obviously, this year they've kind of struggled a little bit. 
Um, but yeah, 375 points in 400 games. Didn't play for you know th- two thirds of this season. He's probably going to finish for like 35 games. I guess half the season. Uh, didn't play at all last year, and only played in 21 games in 2020, 2021. So like his kind of start of his prime where he should be putting up the most points. He hasn't even been playing because of a neck thing that just Buffalo was stubborn, so we're not going to let you do the surgery you want, um, which kind of delayed all this. But 375. So, for example, this I got for $375 for PSA 10. Canadian. These go for like 80 to 100. To me, that seems pretty cheap for a second overall pick. Averaging a point per game, 25 years old, in a good market. Like, to me, that seems like a decent deal. And the reason why is because you're going to look at other stuff. He said, always look at, when you're doing this prospecting, when you're doing all this stuff, and this is kind of the other end. This is a guy that's kind of more established than what a Zach Wilson was. That's in a, going into his second year. But you just want to look at, like, where it is, right? So, like, for me, it's looking at more recent guys. So you have, like, a Jack Hughes. Obviously, he had a kind of a more breakout year this year, but 166 games, 108 points. Year three, stuff goes for $400 to $425. So $25 cheaper for this than that Jack Hughes. I think you, can even, you might even be finding these a little bit cheaper, right? Then This is off eBay prices. This is off 130point.com. A great website if you guys haven't checked it out. Definitely do for when you're trying to comp stuff. Uh, Kaprizov, 24 years old. His stuff goes for $700, 650 to 700 and obviously, he's put up a lot of points in his first two years, 142 points in 126 games. But he's coming in in that like those prime years I was kind of talking about for Jack Eichel that Jack Eichel's missed out on, right? So of course he's gonna probably put up more points. Yeah, he missed out on the, you know, being 18 years old and 19 years old in the NHL and kind of you know learn to play. He's already come in. He's already starting his prime, right? So, but his stuff is $700. So technically, you can get pretty much almost two of these for the price of one Caprizov PSA 10. It's again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You know, can that not go up to $700 for a PSA 10? I think so. Maybe, right? Once again, these are all my opinions. Do not take any of these with a grain of salt. This is just what I think. Said um, Nick Suzuki obviously gets a Canadian's bump, but he goes for 415 right now for a PSA 10 for his young gun. He's got 201 games played. And he's got 138 points. Not too crazy, right? Yeah, at, you know, essentially he's got the same out, you know, half the games of what Eichel's got. You double up his points. He's got 200 and just say 80 points. That's 100 points less than what Jack Eichel has if you double it up. Obviously, he hasn't his prime years yet, but uh, Jason Robertson, $475 for his PSA 10 young gun. It's 119 games and 114 points. Pretty good. But once again, it's just kind of the same pace of what an Eichel's on. Right? So it's like, could you not see that going up? Once again, I just, even if it goes up a little bit, I just think it has potential. And like I said, the upside of like a holy, he was a, t- and it's not like he's a Nolan Patrick or one of these like top five picks that just never panned out or didn't do a whole lot, and you're worried about whatever, like, no, this guy's done it. He's put up the points, right? And it wasn't for Buffalo being a bunch of stooges. The guy probably would even have more points, right? Uh, more hype around him, but they kind of held him back. So it's like, for me, that's what it comes down to. You're going to look at this stuff, look at comparable players. Look at guys that you can say, okay, well, if he compares to this guy, this is what it could be with, right? So it's it's a lot. Um, like I said, it's the hype. And it's all this stuff. But you just got to look at when you're investing, do your research. That's the easiest thing. It doesn't take long. You know, it doesn't take long for you to say, hey, look, I'm going to invest in this guy. Great. Hey, let me do some research. Let me go on eBay. Oh, well, he said quarterbacks are easy because it's all the same position. But even hockey, like, uh, what's some other guys? Even like when I did this, I'm like, oh, let's see some comparables around the same price range of him, maybe a little bit higher. So I literally just put in Young Guns PSA 10 on eBay. Hit enter. <laughs> Auto-populated, okay? Here's all the solds. Not what they're listed for, what they sold for. That's a different thing. Boom, all the solds. Okay, look, I'm looking at it. Here it is. All the guys. And there's some guys that drop off. And there's some guys that t- 
to this day will never make sense to me of why they're the price they are, whether it's too cheap, whether it's too much. I just, once again, there's certain guys, but like I said, you got to decide what you're going to invest in. Um, and like I said, you got to do the research with this stuff. And like I said, I, I'm going to love talking to you guys. I said, I might do some live videos. I might have other guys and get their opinions. Uh, maybe get other guys from the, in the hobby and stuff. Other guys that do the whole content thing, whether it's making videos, whether it's Instagram stuff. Um, like I said, if you guys haven't yet, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll probably put a poll there. Maybe I get your guys' opinion on, hey, what's uh, some young guns you want me to talk about on this week's episode? of whatever I decide to call this series. Um, maybe it's just like card talk or, or something like that. Um, like I said, whether, whatever it is, maybe I'll do some of that stuff. Make sure you follow me on there. But I just, I want to talk about this stuff. Like I think more guys have to talk about it. It doesn't always have to be. Once again, I love seeing the high end cards go for stuff. I love seeing all that. Like I said, seeing what a McKinnon goes for, whatever. But some of the cool stuff is just saying like, ah, oh, you know, like a couple years ago, I bought an Adam Fox for 25 bucks. Threw it in with the rest in order because I was ordering something off else off a guy. Now it's worth 75 bucks, right? Like sometimes it's like, oh, why do I think this guy's going to be good? I, I watched him in juniors or I watched him in this or I've watched his first 10 games in the NHL and I just, there's something about him that I think he's going to be good. Uh, I think his, you know, he could, his card stuff could go up higher if he gets the chance. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that comes into this, but I don't mind having the conversation with you guys. I, I said, uh, Part of this reason why I made the channel was because I liked having a podcast with a buddy of mine, uh, and we talked about sports. I love talking about sports. I love, I love having discussions. Just it's just there's something about just giving your opinion on a player on a team, and you saying this is why I think it, and someone saying, "Well, I think you're wrong because of this," and then you discuss it. Like that's the fun part about this. That's the fun part about cards. It's the investing. It's the prospecting. Prospecting is very scary. Cause you can lose a lot of money, but it's just one of those things. And I appreciate that every one of you guys follow me. I think that's part of what you guys enjoy of this channel is that I have all these conversations while I'm open the packs and stuff. I talk about players. It's not just talking about the cards all the time. I just, I enjoy sports. I love sports, whether it's hockey, whether it's football, whether it's a little bit of basketball, I don't mind it. Baseball. It's okay. Cards can't get into baseball cards. Um, and like I said, there's all this other stuff. I, I, I enjoy it. Um, but like I said, if you guys want to talk about it more, if you guys want to see more of this stuff, let me know. Like I said, I have no problem talking about guys that I think are too low, too high. Um, maybe next video is more of a feature on certain guys on why I think there's too high, why I think they're too low. Like I said, this is just kind of a look behind of why I'm kind of, what goes through this whole mind of mine. Uh, and why I kind of think of them, and why, you know, you're looking at comps. Um, that's what you should be looking at and reasons why you're looking at certain guys to invest in, whether it's long-term, short-term. Uh, like I said, the quick flip stuff, that's on a whole nother thing. If you can get it for a good price, flip it. Um, but yeah, like I said, whatever it is, do not spend money that you do not have and you cannot afford to lose. So uh, anyways, hopefully everyone enjoyed this. Thank you again for watching. I know this has been a very long video for the first one of this series, but uh lot to unpack and once again i appreciate every single one of you guys hit that like hit that subscribe and for eric from the bench talk to you guys later bye guys